What could be more romantic than combining an African adventure with a visit to an exotic tropical paradise? Well, that's exactly what we did to celebrate our honeymoon, and in this video, you'll see what it's like to fly from a safari to the Seychelles. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. Right now, I'm in Nairobi. It's time to head to the Seychelles, though. We're going to fly with Kenya Airways. The Seychelles is a nation made up of about 115 islands, roughly 1,000 miles east of the Kenyan coastline. It's become one of the most sought-after honeymoon destinations anywhere, and when you pair it with a safari, you'll get the best of all possible experiences. So that's what we did. After several days only an arm's length away from Africa's most iconic wild animals in Kenya's Maasai Mara, we flew to Nairobi's domestic airport. There's a link below about the flights we took within Kenya. Anyway, we made our way across town to the international airport for this ultimate honeymoon flight. This once daily departure occurs at a somewhat inconvenient 10 p.m., but the non-stop option between two of the most romantic places on Earth made it the perfect flight to include on our newlywed world tour, and perhaps the honeymooniest flight we've ever taken. We arrived three hours early, which was good because check-in took a long time, but more about that in the lounge. Kenya Airways' flagship route is their Dreamliner service from here in Nairobi up to JFK in New York City. What do you think, Suzanne? You want to do that one? Non-stop to the U.S. from Kenya? Of course. But not today. Instead, we visited the Pride Lounge, which is advertised as the airline's best lounge. In fact, some have even said it's the best lounge in all of Africa. It was definitely a comfortable place to wait. And even though it's really just one big room, the de designers did a really good job of creating several distinctive spaces. Even though it filled up over time as the long-haul international departures neared, it remained a really quiet space, even here in the, uh, the restaurant. That was especially true in the dedicated nap room. The views were limited thanks to the double glass walls, but it was still nice to be able to watch the action out on the ramp, including this partial view of our airplane, which was the same airplane I'd flown several years before to Nairobi from Antenna Nanarivo, Madagascar. I had such a great time with Kenya Airways back then and hope this will be a similar experience. That said, those were simpler times when entering a new country wasn't quite as difficult as it is today. This is the most um, paperwork I've ever had to produce to get on a flight. Uh, between Suzanne and me, it was like, I don't know, 12 or 13 different documents, including things that nobody had said we needed. Um, thankfully, we printed everything in advance, which is best practice for travel in 2021 and beyond. Just have copies of everything, because you never know what they're going to ask for. All in, we were asked for negative COVID tests, proof of our COVID vaccinations, on travel validation, uh, hotel reservation, verification of our paperwork for the Seychelles, and travel insurance. All of that required a toast to celebrate it being done. Here's to the return of some kind of glamorous jet setting. Cheers. Cheers. And nothing says glamorous jet setting quite like a chicken nugget from the buffet, which, by the way, required a glove to access. The chicken nuggets in this lounge are embarrassingly good. And Suzanne got the very last one. And this is what marriage is about. She's giving me half. Five, five stars all day long. A lot of people uh, pick the Seychelles as a honeymoon destination. We picked it because, well, there's a flight from Nairobi. And it's a great honeymoon destination. I guess that's true too. But let us know in the comments. What's your dream honeymoon destination? But the time flew fast in the lounge, and soon we had to head downstairs to gate 15 to get on board our flight. The gate area didn't look too full, so the flight was relatively empty, which made boarding pretty straightforward. Everyone was invited to head down the jet bridge and out to the ramp at the same time. We'd be boarding by air stairs, which is always a highlight for an aviation enthusiast in good weather. Business class is arranged in a 1-2 configuration, and the economy cabin is set up in a 2-2 configuration. We booked seats 4D and 4J. On the seat, we were greeted with a pillow and a blanket. Welcome amenities on this late night departure. But I was too excited about visiting a new country. The Seychelles would be the 68th country I'd visited. Each seat has power and a headphone jack, which allows you to listen to the IFE, which was extremely limited. 
Airlines can save a lot of money by not licensing as many films to show, and it seems like Kenya Airways took advantage of that savings, at least on this flight. The 12 business class seats in this airplane offer 38 inches of pitch and are 17 inches wide. The 84 economy seats have the same width, but offer less legroom with 31 inches of pitch. Was business class necessary on a three hour flight? Of course not, but this was our honeymoon. Headphones were also available in the seat back pocket. As I've mentioned in the past, a kind word from a flight attendant goes a long way. And when she brought refreshing towels to us, we were greeted by name by our chief purser. She then brought us a pre-departure beverage. She was great. Tonight's flight was scheduled to be just over three hours, and after a short taxi, we were on our way out over the Indian Ocean. Oh, and by the way, we were the only people in business class. The back was about half full. As is often the case when heading to island destinations, flight attendants had to spray bug spray prior to departure. I'd say everybody on this plane was happy for their mask at this point. Just after takeoff, I pulled out the small but sturdy tray table and started working on even more paperwork that we still needed to fill out. Soon, dinner was served. I had the beef, and Suzanne opted for the curry. Frankly, we didn't think we'd get dinner on a late night departure on a regional aircraft. Again, we left at 10 p.m. But I suppose years of traveling with U.S. carriers has eroded our expectations. The food was substantial and tasty. Now, I don't think anyone's ever chosen a Kenya Airways flight because of the catering, but I also don't think anyone would be disappointed by what we had. Suzanne got comfortable in the seat and took a short nap while I watched Lincoln on the IFE and took advantage of the whiskey. There wasn't much to see out the window, but thanks to the magic of YouTube, we can fast forward to tomorrow. Sorry for the interruption. The Seychelles are amazing. This flight is totally worth it, and I really hope you can get here uh, at some point in your future, because it really is incredible. We didn't have the chance to venture off the main island of Mahe, but it had plenty to offer. The Seychelles economy is largely based on tourism, and with beaches like these, it's easy to see why. The biggest surprise was not the beautiful beaches. I knew about those but they're bats with four foot wingspans flying around everywhere. I mean, look at these things. No worries though, they only eat fruit. The growth of tourism, by extension the Seychellian economy, is thanks in large part to the opening of the Seychelles International Airport back in 1971. Today, the airport is the base for Air Seychelles and also hosts the likes of Aeroflot, Air France, Ethiopian, Qatar, and some 12 or 13 other airlines. Meanwhile, back on board our flight, we'd begun our descent, but let's take a look at the Jeb score. As always, we'll look at the lounge, the seat, the food, the in-flight entertainment, and the service. First, the Pride Lounge is fantastic. It's got plenty of seating, solid views, showers, and really good chicken nuggets. It's a solid four-star lounge. If there were some kind of elevated dining experience or even a nicer bar, it would earn that extra star, but it's definitely earned its status as one of the nicest in Africa. The second, the seat. Well, it's a typical seat for a regional jet, nothing special, worth every one of the three stars I'll give it. Third, the in-flight entertainment. Well, I mean, it's, it's nice they have it, and it's better than nothing, but it's not much better than nothing. This is worth two stars. The food was perfectly acceptable, and the fact of the matter is, we didn't expect anything, so it was a bonus. We'll give it four stars. Finally, the service. Our flight attendant, Alice, wins the award for nicest flight attendant on the whole journey, and that includes our flights on Qatar and Emirates in first class. She was incredible. She called us by name, anticipated our needs, and, and treated us like royalty. Five stars here. So that leaves Kenya Airways E-190 service from Nairobi to Mahe and the Seychelles with 18 out of a possible 25 stars. This truly was an unforgettable flight between two ultimate honeymoon destinations. I can't believe we were fortunate enough to get to make this journey and can't wait to hear your suggestions about other ultimate honeymoon routes. But as always, between now and the next time, see you in the sky.